Hi, and welcome back to the bench. Today, an interesting question popped up in the IRC channel hangout uh, for, in the, uh, for the EEV blog. The question was, simply, how does one go about measuring the leakage current uh, between gate and source on a MOSFET, in this case, a N-channel MOSFET? And I thought it was an interesting question because it would kind of just follow that you could use a resistor and some stuff and it should just work, you know, throw a little Ohm's law in there and it should work. But um, the whole point of the gate, uh, of course, on a MOSFET is that it's isolated from, well, isolated, I mean, it, it's, it's, th there's no current that will travel, in theory, when you apply a voltage to the gate to control the uh, drain and the source, uh, the current that goes between the drain and the source. So it's not evident that there should be any current that goes from the gate to the source, um, but there is, in fact, and if you look at the data sheet, <coughs> And I checked about uh, I, check, I checked two or three of the data sheets I have for the various MOSFETs I have in the lab, and they're all plus minus 100 nanoamps, is the typical uh, leakage between uh, the gate and the source. And um, so then the question becomes, well, okay, so how do you measure 100 nanoamps? That's fairly small. It's you know, it's like easily seven orders of magnitude, or lower than you know. Than, than typical, you know, one amp measurements. <coughs> so, <coughs> well, okay. So there's obviously there's two ways we can do it. First, we can use a resistor, which <coughs> actually I'm doing this wrong. There we go. Um, <coughs> first, you can use a resistor like I had originally just set up, and you basically pass a current through. Um, I should pass current. Well, you, you apply a voltage to one end of the resistor, have the other end of the resistor connected to the gate, and then you ground the source pin, and then you measure the voltage drop across your resistor, and that should equal the current flowing through the resistor into uh, into the gate, and then the leakage current, which should equal the leakage current jumping over to the source. Um, the second way is to use microcurrent here. Uh, this is uh, designed and built by the guy running the EEV blog, uh, Dave Jones, and <coughs> It's uh, it's got three settings. It's got a millivolt, uh, one millivolt per milliamp, one millivolt per microamp, and one millivolt per nanoamp range. So we're going to use the one millivolt per nanoamp range. Sorry, that was a little blown out there. Um, and in that case, you just basically connect uh, your power supply in line, in series, or you should say you connect the microcurrent in series with your power supply going through to the gate, and then uh, ground your source. And essentially, you'll be measuring. Uh, the current going through, uh, the leakage essentially, sorry, going from the gate to the source. And we'll measure this up on a fairly decent multimeter. It's a Keithley 196 system DMM. Uh, the input impedance of this, and this, this is a, a little mistake I made originally when I shot this video clip, is I used a handheld multimeter. I'm going to go get it right now. <coughs> the old, the old uh, Tech uh, 916. Of course, not thinking, and this this is a one. The, the resistor I was showing down there is a 1.5 meg resistor. This thing has a 10 meg input resistance, which means that you're going to get a 10 to 1 dividing divider just by putting this guy in, in parallel with that resistor. So, <clears throat> not a good way to measure that. And originally, I used a 12 meg resistor, which is even worse. Um, so, it was like cutting down the, the cutting the resistance in half, um, and then they didn't do the calculations right, and so forth and so forth. So. What we're going to do <coughs> is we're going to use this one, this guy here, which has, as far as I can tell, an immeasurably high input impedance. Now that means I don't have a piece of equipment that can measure the input impedance of this meter. I use this meter to measure the input impedance of my HP 3478, and that guy can go or goes up to 41 mega ohm input impedance before, uh, well, it's at its lowest range. As most millivolt range. Um, this guy don't have a clue, so it's very high. I should probably read the spec sheet, but whatever. It's it's high enough that I'm not going to worry about measuring a 1.5 meg resistor. So even if it must be higher than you know 20 or 40, 20 or meg ohm or something like that, so we'll be fine. <coughs> so the resistor, when I do the resistor measurement, there shouldn't be much impact on there. And right now, I'm just set up to measure the output of the microcurrent, which is a, uh, a millivolt in a millivolt scale, so it sh shouldn't have any impact on the um, 
on, on the, 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 mul the, the multimeter I use should have no impact on, on the test setup because the test setup is only including the, well, it's including the, the, the current sense resistor plus amplifiers in here. So without further ado, let's go do that. We're going to do two measurements in each one. We're going to do a two volt and a five, uh, sorry, a, a five volt and a 10 volt measurement <coughs> uh, just to see if there's any difference. Um, already, I suspect there probably is. Um, purely because I saw it before, uh, so I'm not 100 percent sure why, but there, there there does seem to be a difference. But let's go ahead and do that. Um, we'll go ahead and point. Uh, let's go adjust that so I can get everything in the shot here. So we're going to set that to five volts. Uh, I just set a 50 milliamp current limit, but that's just who cares. I could put it to amps; it wouldn't matter. So we'll go turn that on. Uh, actually, before we do that, pardon me. I'm going to go zero the meter. It's jumping around a little bit here, but anyway. Alright, so now we're getting... We're getting about five... So point zero zero. so we're getting five millivolts, so on the nanoscale... Uh, uh, one millivolt per nano... Volt, uh, nano amp... Uh, range. <coughs> that would be <coughs> basically uh, four... 5, let's say 4.5 nanovolts. So we'll just go and note this down here. Because remember, if you don't write it down, it ain't science. So at 5 volts, we're measuring with the microcurrent uh, approximately 4.5 nanoamps. And we'll do the same measurement now, but with 10 volts applied to the gate. So we'll go and just bump this up. Oops, that's probably a bit high. There we go, 10 volts. And we're getting uh, about nine, it's bouncing around, it's about nine, let's say nine nanoamps. <clears throat> so the first thing that comes to mind is that's much lower than the plus minus 100 nano, uh, nanoamps that's in the spec sheet. <coughs> However, that also might be in the worst possible case where you have a fairly high, like, I mean, if I go up to 20, so in theory, this, um, the maximum, the absolute maximum is 20 uh, volts. Uh, of course, I need to switch this, but anyway. Um, <coughs> so yeah, the maximum is 20 volts between the source and the gate, so we're not getting anywhere near that. Um, and perhaps also they're just manufacturing things that are involved too. That means that the variance is plus minus 100 nanovolts, but it's not necessarily true that it, they all are. So, I mean, with the sample one, I don't know. But essentially, this is what we're measuring. So let's go switch over to the resistor configuration and we'll measure that. We'll use that to measure this now. Let's switch back here. So turn it around. So we'll disconnect the microcurrent. Move that out of the way. So in this configuration, we're going to basically apply our voltage directly through here. And we're going to set up. <coughs> set up our multimeter to measure the voltage drop across this resistor. All right, so now here. Our set voltage is 10. Let's bring it down to 5. Turn that on. Uh, oops. <laughs> Do the same thing again. We'll, we'll re-zero at the meter. Turn that on. Okay. And so we're getting about 5 or 6 nanoamps now. Alright. Well, not, sorry, not nanoamps. Pardon me. Uh, We're getting at five volts. We're measuring about six millivolts. We'll say let's, let's call it six millivolts. And at ten, whoops, ten volts. Bump that up. We're going to be measuring. Uh, that's bouncing between eleven and twelve. Now 10 and 11, let's call it 10.5 millivolts. 
millivolts. Now these of course aren't the uh, final measurements. We've got to do a little Ohm's law here. So let's go jump down here really quickly. So of course um, V equals I R. So in this case the measured voltage is 6 millivolts. I'm going to divide that by the resistance. Now, the resistance for this meet, uh, for this particular resistor was uh, 1.517 mega ohm. So we'll divide this by 1,517,000. A couple of quick maths, and we get. Um, you get roughly three nano amps. Oh, that's not too bad. That's you know not too far off with what we got before. So let's see. That. Let's do the other one. Point. Uh, sorry, zero five milli uh, volts over again. One five seven one triple zero. Tap that all in. Oops. And we get six nanoamps. Huh. All right, so <clears throat> what does this tell us? First of all, to me, it says right off the bat, we've got a bit of a problem here because there's a fair amount of difference between these two sets of figures. Um, perhaps not as much as I should be worried about. I mean, they're still in the ballpark. Uh, we didn't get, you know, they're not an order of magnitude out, but they're they're definitely percentage points out, <coughs> uh, and and probably an unsettlingly large percentage out uh, from each other. But again, I'm I'm not entirely sure which one's which. This test setup too is completely crazy because I'm using a dicky little resistor. I think it's actually a five percent tolerance resistor. So maybe you know not that that makes a huge difference, but maybe it's fluctu it, its value is fluctuating. Um, I'm not entirely sure about the error in the power supply. Perhaps there is some ripple or something else. Uh, clearly, the meter is not calibrated. My, my DMM is not calibrated, so maybe there's a problem there. Although I'm using the same one for both measurements, but nye, nye, nye. and again, I don't know how calibrated the uh, microcurrent is. It's supposed to be fairly calibrated, but we're also on the lowest range in the darn thing. So, and and a low end of the lowest range, we're talking you know millivolts. Uh, well, millivolts on the output, but milli uh, nanoamps on the input. So perhaps there's some non-linearity going on there too. <clears throat> but from this, we could average it out and we could say that, well, the leakage of this particular FET is roughly, give or take, between 4.5 or say 3 and 10 or 3 and 9 nanoamps, somewhere in there. Um, <coughs> so there you have it. The two different methods, one uh, using uh, one using yold yold resistors, and the other one using a nice little piece of equipment, but uh, perhaps not as accurate at this level as uh, as who would be expected. Um, but nonetheless, there you go. I hope you uh, learned something, uh, and I sure did. Uh, that this is a heck of a lot more difficult than it than it sounds. Uh, getting good measurements in practice, so. Um, have fun, get out there, start measuring stuff, uh, keep on measuring stuff, and uh, good luck. Catch you later.